Hello and welcome to my review of the, the newish K-Sun UV68D radio. This is a nice compact and well-made radio from K-Sun, relatively unknown Chinese radio manufacturer, but uh, gathering pace uh, from what it seems like online anyway. Um, this looks to be a, a, a very similar radio to the Zasto and A19, if any of you are familiar with that radio. It has a single PTT button on the side and two function buttons. No flashlight on this radio. Uh, it has a high capacity uh, 6 amp per hour 7.4 volt battery and it sports the standard Kenwood side microphone and earpiece there and it's programmable using a standard um, programming cable there which uh, most of us or most of you guys that watch these videos and have these radios will already have. As you turn it on uh, it uh, translates as welcome to the <laughs> anyway the uh, the manual is fully in Chinese uh, which was a bit confusing at first as I couldn't find any English manual for it it comes with a standard earpiece and belt clip and uh, this time a good quality belt clip unlike the uh, the new UV82 Plus uh, a very well made and nice antenna for this radio and slightly longer than your standard antennas too which is a bonus and also a, a well made and sturdy charger supplied with the standard um, DC wall wart type adapter which is functional if nothing else and um, yeah it's a male SMA connector at the top of the radio and the antenna screws nice and firmly into that again like I said a, a nicely made radio the, um, the battery just pushes off there slides off nice and easy no struggles there as already mentioned a 6 amp hour 7.4 volt lithium battery um, radio claims to be 8 watts but we'll put it on the power meter to test that and uh, once together with the belt clip on you can see the physical size difference there it does make the radio a little bit more chunky front to back but it's very secure there next to a UV5R you can see the size difference UV5R plus uh, you can see it's physically a bigger radio and the weight there you can see the radio with the battery and without the battery um, a stylish radio color display on the front there and um, the charger doesn't suffer from the light coming on uh, without the power plugged in. Right, on VHF high power, it uh, produced fairly standard and normal average power of 4 watts. It's quite normal, uh, but certainly not the 8 watts as advertised on the box. Now, on UHF, there's a strange problem. You'll see as I powered up, the, um, the power starts to drop off. You'll see that again as I try again. I noticed it straight away. The power starts to back down. I can only put this down to the battery perhaps not being cycled. After a couple of charges, it stopped doing this. So I don't know if it's an issue with the, with the transmitter or the battery, but after a couple, well, sort of half an hour of use, it actually stopped doing this and it stayed at firmly at two watts. But um, still not the most powerful radio at two watts. But um, as you'll see a bit later on in the test, it still performs fairly well, this radio. So. Uh, it's not to worry too much about that. Um, the screens are adjustable. Um, the camera doesn't really do this justice. It makes them look a bit iffy, but you can adjust them between black and purple, blue, green, uh, red, which is slightly strange, and white. My favorite was white. And uh, in the dark, the keys are very, very clear. You won't have any problems seeing those keys or the display, obviously, in the dark. So it's a nice, bright keyboard and display. The website for this radio um, shows the different colours that are available of this uh, radio. I got this from the uh, AliExpress website. Um, very glossy and sort of glamorous advert for this radio. In reality, the radio perhaps doesn't live up to the to the advert so much, uh, but it's still a really nice unit and available between 50 and 60 pounds. Now, it's a very similar radio to the Zastone A9, which we, which is shown here. And certainly even the software worked to a point where uh, the Zastone software would read the radio, but it wouldn't let me program the radio. So if you are getting one of these radios, you need to get the, the software for the radio from your, the supplier to make sure you can program it. Uh, here in the, the I got this, the, the supplier to send me this software. The first thing you have to do is to change the menus from Chinese to English. And that's how you do that there on the ABC icon. Uh, connect up with your standard um, um, programming cable and um, it takes a few seconds to read that in, I sped that up. And I've already programmed the radio here with some frequencies, uh, just to test. It's got uh, 999, so it's got plenty of slots there. And they're also available to put in banks, so you can scan them in banks. 
There are other settings that you can actually uh, set and play around with in the radio here, which I'm, I'm showing you briefly. Um, but you can obviously do all of this on the radio itself. It's very easy to manually program this radio. The only thing that you can't do manually is to alphanumerically name the channels, which is, which is standard on a lot of radios. So you can program repeater splits and all your channels and everything manually without the software. But if you want to name the channels with, uh, with alphanumeric characters, you have to use the software. You can numerically name them, of course, but you can't use alphanumerics without the software. So if you want to name the channels, just get the software from your supplier and you'll be good to go. Like I say, the, the Zastone A19 will read it and that is widely available. But if I get around to it, I'll put a link to the software that the, my supplier sent me. So if you can't get hold of it, you can, uh, you can uh, get hold of it from the, the link on this page. Um, yeah, so basically what I recommend you do is do a backup of the original so software on the radio before you do anything in case you have to re-upload it in case there's any corruption issues. It's always a, a good practice to do that. Um, okay, on the this is uh, the radio as program now, showing some of the repeaters that I had programmed there and test frequencies. You can see you can pro put your name in the top there, and uh, as well you can you can sort of customise this radio. Now the display looks slightly iffy on my camera, but in reality it doesn't look sort of hazy and funny like that. That moiring, as they call it, is just an after effect of how my camera functions. The actual display looks nice and smooth and clear in reality, so don't uh, get worried too much about that. It's a nice clear display. The other functions that this has, it has the FM radio. Now to get to that you push and hold the lower side button, push and hold it and then it comes on. There we go. And it does actually, it does actually, or oh, turned it off, it does actually remember the uh, the station that you're on so when you turn it back on again it will actually go to the channel that you're on now it doesn't you can't program in, uh, a, a frequency into the radio but what you can do is just push and hold it and it'll start scanning and it'll go up and when it finds the next um, next station it will stop on it and then if you want to change the direction of scan you press the scan the button at the bottom sorry so you push and hold the button and then it will scan and then you can change the direction with the up and the down buttons there so if you want to scan down from 99.1 there you press the down button and it will scan downwards do it again so it's scanning upwards press and hold it and then it will scan downwards right we're here again um, not a very good day either uh, not snowing at least but um, we're going uh, Test this uh, K Sun radio and see how it gets on at the first location here, location A. Let's um, go and give the K Sun UV 68D a test then. See how it gets on. I'm assuming it's going to be well, this nice long antenna. Look, it's going to be uh, fine at location A, but we'll we'll find out. And if you want to see how this radio compares to the other radios, then please go and watch all my other videos and study them closely <laughs> and you'll see uh, you'll you get a good idea of the comparison between these sets right so let's go and try it right let's give this a go it's a bit windy but we'll try this is g7 lm Power test one two three four five five four three two one. Quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is G7LN cable with the case on UV 68D at location A. Three miles testing in a very windy condition. UHF high power test one two three four five five four three two one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Right, we're here at location B. And uh, let's go and give the K-Sun UV68D a blast. Right, we're here with the UV68D, the K-Sun. Let's test this out. This is G7LNK portable. G7LNK portable. G7LNK portable with the K-Sun UV68D at location B, six miles. Testing UHF, UHF high power setting. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Alright, let's try the case one. This is G7 LA K. This is G7 LA K portable, G7 LA K portable testing the case on UV68D at location B, approximately six 
Mount VHF test high power. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Right, we'll just try, we're about 15 miles as the crow flies from a repeater, my local repeater GB3EH. We'll just see if we can get onto that repeater from here and uh, that'll be a good test sat in the car. Let's try that. G7LNK checking access into GB3EH. This is GB, ah, GB3, G7 LNK Portable, Golf 7 Lima November Kilo Portable, checking access into GB3H with the K-Sun UV68D. So I think that proves that that was working fine. Um, what do I think about the K-Sun? Um, I think it's a remarkably good radio for the money. Um, a couple of points to mention, the advertising material kind of showed the front face of this as like a glossy finish at times and a, so I was a bit surprised when it turned up with this sort of matte plastic finish but I suppose it's a bit more durable and less likely to scratch than a glossy finish um, but that was a slight letdown um, the slight issue with the power dropping off on UHF that was just a battery issue I think uh, I think that's been that's obviously it doesn't do it anymore so it must have just been charging um, all round though, I think it's a it's a really good little radio. Um, one for you if you if you if you like um, to use your radio as a scanner. This is probably one for you guys because it's quite wide band and it's also got a thousand memory slots. So that's quite quite a lot. Um, software and hardware wise, internally, I think it's very very similar to the Zastone A19. Um, so a very similar radio to that. Not the most powerful radio, but it's a very well made radio. It feels really, really well made. It looks like it's got a good battery, a good solid, certainly a heavy battery. Um, so if you're after something that's a little bit more robust, it claims to be IP68, but I'm not gonna try that out, um, waterproof. Um, if you're after something that's a little bit different, and they also come in flashy colors, so again, if you want something that looks slightly different, uh, definitely worth trying this uh, this radio. So I'll give it a thumbs up, and um, it, there's not any other reviews of this radio out on YouTube yet, so it'll be interesting to see what other people have to say about the UV68D. Right, I'm gonna shoot off. If you have been, thank you ever so much for, for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really, really helps me when you do that, and um, I shall, probably drum up something for this month's competition um the previous competition winner michael laughlin still hasn't got in contact with me so mike if you're watching please get in contact with me and i'll send you off that zastone mini 9 right catch you on the next one bye